I've been inspired by Michael at Overland Bound to try to crank out a few more uh, videos over the next few weeks. And he's been doing, um, for the last few days, he's been pushing out some a little bit rougher content. Uh, and I think it's a great idea. I know for me personally, I get bogged down sometimes sort of overthinking. Uh, so I'm just gonna push out some videos. He came to me about a week ago uh, asking for a radio recommendation. Helped him pick out all the parts, pieces and parts he needs. He's been installing that, so go watch those over on his channel. Uh, and I told him that when he gets that installed, I'd help him walk through all the APRS settings. And then I, that kind of turned into like, maybe I'll just do a video about that because I know a lot of people use this radio. Uh, there's a lot of settings to go through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a video on the APRS settings. I'll link that up here as well. I'm also gonna do a quick video just on APRS in general. I'll do a little bit of a technical overview and then I'm also gonna do uh, more of like the practical use cases of APRS. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the rig, get the radio turned on and uh, we'll get this video going. Okay, here we go. This is everything you ever wanted to know about APRS. I figured I'd go through a quick practical rundown of APRS, what it is, what it can be used for, and uh, maybe it'll help people understand it a little more and figure out uh, whether or not it's gonna be useful for you. For this overview, I'm gonna be using my main radio in my Jeep. It's a Kenwood TMD 710G. And if you've asked me, ever asked me for a radio recommendation, this is the one I always recommend. This is the top dog, especially if you're gonna do APRS stuff. There is no better on the market. So let's get into it. First, I wanna talk about some of the technical bits of APRS. Things are about to get pretty technical here. So skip ahead. I'm gonna leave time codes. Uh, maybe I'll flash some on the screen here. I'll link some below. So if you're not interested in the technical bits, you wanna jump right to the practical bits then uh, you can use the links below or the timestamp that's right here on the screen. Okay, so let's jump into the technical bits. First off, what is APRS? APR stands for the Automatic Packet Reporting System. When this first came out in the 80s, it was called the Automatic Position Reporting System. APRS is an RF digital protocol and broadcast network that can be used for real-time information exchange. This system makes use of AX25 frames to share small chunks of information. The important thing to know about all that is essentially over the APRS network, you can send these little packets of data. These packets can contain things like position tracking, which is GPS data. It can contain weather data, uh, emergency beacons, and text messages. APRS was created in the 80s by a guy named Bob. So if any of you understand um, computer networking, you'll be interested to know that APRS is a decentralized broadcast network. So there's a number of different nodes on the network. They can all communicate to and from each other. And typical node types are gonna be radios or trackers. Uh, so of course, radio is like this. It can send and receive. A tracker typically just sends out information, doesn't necessarily receive. There's digipeters, which store and forward packets to other nodes. There's gateways which forward packets onto other networks like the internet. And then there's clients and servers that listen usually on the other side of a gateway that read the packet data, process it, and make it available by other means. For example, a web page. There's specific frequencies that are designated for APRS. For those of us in North America, that frequency is 144.390. And you can see on my radio here, I have it actually just always set on this side to 144.390. Uh, if you live in other parts of the world, you're gonna wanna look up your local APRS frequency. Those are typically uh, continental standards. So for example, uh, Europe and Russia, it's 144.80 for China. It's 144.64. I think Australia is 145.175 and on and on. So depending on where you are in the world, you're going to want to look and see what the local APRS frequency is. And at least for North America, it's 144.390. And that's used for Canada, United States, and Mexico. So an APRS packet, every packet sent on the network has a number of pieces that have to be there. I'm not going to go into all of those individual pieces. It's a little bit outside of the scope of this, but at a high level, know that every packet has a source of who sent it, a destination of who it's being sent to, 
and then some data which can be used to say, you know, a location and speed of where the packet was sent, or maybe it's weather information, or maybe it's just a text message, etc. So those are kind of like three main pieces. There's a number of other ones that maybe I'll do in a more advanced video later. I don't want to put everybody to sleep. Anybody who's sitting through this technical part is <clears throat> probably already struggling to keep their eyes open. Now that we've done a quick crash course on the technical part, we'll jump into the more practical uses. So the most popular use of APRS is to provide sort of an augmented reality of what's around you. It allows you to use your radio to see what's around you, things like weather stations, repeaters, other hams, etc. And that alone is the most popular use for APRS. So let me show a quick demo of what I mean by that. If I, on my radio, I tap list here, it'll show me the repeaters that are coming in. And over here on the left, it tells me who is sending the packet, then what time the packet's coming in. And then over here, it gives me a little bit of information on what type of packet is coming in. So I can see at the top here, this one from uh, it says mule here came in at 224. This is a fixed station. So I happen to know that this is a repeater on top of mule mountain. So if I open this up, I can see some information about that repeater. I can see it's a 25 watt repeater. It's situated at about 2,500 feet, 78 miles southeast of me at a bearing of 131 degrees. And they have a three decibel omnidirectional vertical antenna that they're using. And I can come over here and see exactly the GPS coordinates of where this station is located. So that's a repeater station. Let's check out one of these other packets. We'll go to the second one down here, KD9GOL. We can see their name is probably Tyler. They are moving 28 miles per hour. They're at 5,000 feet. And they're northeast of here by 15 miles. So Mm, this guy, so this guy's likely driving up uh, Catalina Highway up to Mount Lemmon right now, I'm guessing. And then again, we can see the exact coordinates. The last type of common station you'll see is a weather station. And we can go here and see that this weather station is 84 miles almost due east of me. It's at a bearing of 86 degrees. I can scroll over here and see that there's zero rain. It's 61 degrees Fahrenheit. There's an eight mile per hour wind at 254 degrees. And then here it tells me the barometric pressure. Over here I have the relative humidity. So this is great. We use this all the time when we're out. We'll wake up in the morning and we'll kind of look at the weather stations within earshot. And a lot of times that will help inform which way we want to head for the day. So do we want to head to the sunnier weather or do we want to head to maybe colder weather but less wind, etc. So as you can see, with all these different packet types, it makes it really easy to just kind of hop on your radio, look and see what's around you. If I go back to these location packets, there's also a way with this radio and most other radios to hook up a tablet. I, so I don't have it hooked up right now. I don't have my tablet in here. I'll share a picture that shows it hooked up. Um, but you can hook up a tablet that shows you a map a pinpoint for every location as it's updated. Uh, that's really handy if you're on a convoy with other people with APRS radios. You can see exactly where everybody is. And we've used that on a few, uh, a few of our longer trips where we have to split up. And sometimes we'll be 40, 50 miles apart. But we can use the radio to see where everybody is relative to where we are. Uh, it makes it easy for coordinating meetup spots when we need to get the convoy back together, etc. I mentioned digipeters in the technical part. Digipeters also listen to all these packets. If a digipeter hears these location packets, it's likely to forward it onto the internet, and then people can hop on a website and actually see exactly where you are. APRS.fi is the main one that I use. I, there are a few other ones, but I believe uh, APRS.fi is the most popular. They all typically show the same data. Aside from just general seeing what's around you, and seeing where your friends are and following people on a map. You can also use the location data uh, for tracking. We have used this on a stratospheric balloon launch last summer. We had an APRS radio beacon that we sent up in our payload. And then we used that to track our aircraft during the flight. We also used it to help recover the payload when it uh, landed. APRS is also used pretty regularly by search and rescue teams. 
They'll use it for things like keeping track of where they've already searched and keeping track of other members of the team so, to make sure that everybody's accounted for. The last practical use I'll mention is APRS messaging. We use it all the time, and when we're on trips, it's super nice to be able to send messages when we're well out of cell signal. Most of the time here in Arizona, when we go out, we have zero hope of any sort of cell signal. This is super valuable when, I'm out, when we're out on trips, especially when I'm on a trip and my wife is back at home. It allows me to send her a text message to let her know, hey, I made it to camp. She's also a licensed ham, so she can respond back through her cell phone and it will come back to my radio. I'll probably do a video at some point just on APRS messaging and uh, a little bit more of the specifics of how to set it up, how to send messages, how to use the cell network and the email gateways and those types of things. It's a little bit more involved and I think this video is probably already getting a little bit too long. I guess before I end this, I'll, I'll talk about repeaters just a little bit more. Um, in North America, in United States specifically, repeaters are just about everywhere. There are a few spots uh, where there's a little bit light coverage or sometimes no coverage, but for the most part, no matter where you are in the United States, uh, you're very likely to have at least one, if not more, APRS digipeters around and listening. There is a piece of the APRS packet called the PATH, which you can adjust to help uh, relay signals a little bit more because some repeaters uh, may not forward to the internet so you want to tell that repeater to like keep sending your packet and I should also note that this Kenwood radio is also a digipeter I can turn it on so that as I'm driving around not only am I sending and receiving APRS packets but I'm uh, digipeating any APRS packet that I hear if somebody's sending packets who may not be able to reach a repeater but I, my radio gets it my radio can rebroadcast that and maybe I maybe I'm closer to the repeater or maybe I have more power etc so uh, in that sense it's kind of like a mesh network where a lot of the nodes can actually serve as repeaters to repeat uh, any packets that they hear to kind of help broaden coverage I think I'll wrap it up for this quick APRS crash course hope that was at least a little bit helpful if you have any questions or you'd like to see videos with maybe a little bit more detail about any particular aspect please leave a comment down below and uh and if there's enough interest i'll i'll definitely make more of these videos i just kind of skimmed the surface but i wanted to get a little overview out there right away i'm also going to create another video specifically about setting up this radio for aprs and i'll go through uh, a detailed walkthrough of the settings so i'll tag that video right up here and i'll leave it in the description down below if you're interested in watching that so i think i'm going to go ahead and wrap this up Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you found this at least a little bit valuable. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. I'm gonna do a little bit more on the radios. I'll be putting out some more videos in the relative near future uh, about radios and, and communications, especially in the context of overlanding and outdoor adventuring. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. Until next time, 73.